hip hop is like any any sport. You know what I'm saying? It's like basketball or football. If you can throw a football, it doesn't matter what color you are. Like his story is so crazy, bro. Like the same shit people criticize Eminem for now for being so successful is the same reason why they discredited him initially. Right? He had shit to prove. Nobody wanted. Him. Nobody was fucking with him. But now, since he got over that hump and was eating, the whole narrative flipped. All right, we, we, we wasn't fucking with you before because you white. Well, all right, well, we're discrediting you now because you white. <laughs> it's like, catch 22, damn. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. The game or Eminem? Eminem. Really? Eminem is dope. I mean, I, I ain't saying game ain't dope, but Eminem is, is, is the motherfucker wrote, uh, things just ain't the same for gangsters. Mm. Now, th th he wrote that. That's one of my favorite fucking for Dre, songs. For Dre. For Dre. Right. Next time you come across these motherfucking haters, bro, make sure you play them this goddamn reaction from Stevie Knight YouTube channel. Let's get it. Things just ain't the same for gangsters. Times is changing. Young niggas is aging. But the strangest things can happen from jabbing pregnant women in the abdomen so they can't have children. You try to come back at me with what you gonna do? Try to outrat me with that happy shit. This is a shot. What up, what up, what up, Night Nation? It's your boy, Stevie Knight. Bot, to get on one of these things, y'all feel me? We'll give it a watch. Night's watch. Um, seeing that we are in the middle of the Slim Shady LP 2.0 review, um, sent this video. And I believe it's gonna be Eminem addressing his thoughts about the Slim Shady LP. You know what I mean? It's gonna provide me a good picture of how it was back then. Back then when all when all this stuff was going on, whatever, man. At least that's what y'all said, bro. You know what I'm saying? So um hopefully this is what I expect it to be. Uh it says much our first time with Eminem. Oh, so it's like some damn radio show or something. Um, but yeah, let's get into it, man. Eminem 101, let go. We're probably like on Eminem 301 at this point, bro. We're in graduate school. Let's get it. The man himself, Mr. Slim Shady, Eminem. Hi, my name is. <laughs> my name is. What's going on, man? How you you all right? I'm doing good. All right. How you feeling? I'm chilling. I'm yeah. chilling. I'm chilling. All right, now, now, some people actually think that, you know, um, you know, you hook up with the man himself, Dr. Dre, and, uh, you know, you kick out a cool video, and right. they think, oh, that's it. That's all you have to do. But, I mean, you, you actually lazy. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's how no, these young I people think I it's wish, like. <laughs> I wish that was all I had to do. I wish that was all I had to do. But there's a whole foundation surrounding you. So why don't you kind of break that down for uh, for, for a lot of people? Because I mean, you obviously, I mean, like, you're kind of tired of talking about it. You don't necessarily want to be just known as like an underground. You start from the underground in terms of like your MC and skills and that type of thing. But tell us about the foundation in terms of what what brought you to this point. What brought me to this point? Um, I was an underground MC for years. You know. Um, I was doing my thing. I was in a lot of rap contests, you know, um, in Detroit. I won a lot of contests, a lot of battles in Detroit. Um, took second place in the Scribble Jam in Cincinnati. Went to LA for the Rap Olympics. Was constantly battling, you know. That was my that was my thing. That was my that was the only way for me to get known. You know, that's the only way I knew how to get known. And then when I was in the Rap Olympics, back is there another rapper on the mainstream? that has the pedigree that Eminem has as far as the rap battling element. You know what I mean? Like, was has there ever been a time, fuck, has there ever been a rapper to do that prior to him? Because typically that stuff doesn't translate well into music, make, to making music. And then you have, here you have the best selling hip hop artists of all time who literally came from battle rap. I guess Meek Mill, but I don't know, but he wasn't doing it to the extent of Eminem. Like that's what, that's how Eminem was paying his bills was battle rap, you know what I mean? And it just it's, it just goes against that ignorant ass narrative when they try to to discredit what Eminem has been able to achieve as an artist because of this, right? When he's the only rapper to be on the billboards and sell all these records and win Grammys and things of that nature, bro. Like Pac didn't, or Biggie, Biggie battle rap too, but not not to the extent of M. Well, nobody doing that. Well, nobody getting in no leagues and winning. Off the top of my head, you know, Pac wasn't, Wayne wasn't, 
Big wasn't Hove. I mean, he. I get. I'm, I'm assuming he did the battle rap scene on, on the street, but like actually entering into leagues and winning, trying to pay bills by battle rapping, dog. And then that's that's one that's one side of the story. But then on top of it, like I said, it's always you. It's always used against him the color of his skin to diminish him being part of the culture when literally he is. He was born from the culture, bro. <laughs> battle rap, dog. Back in '97. I took second place in the Rap Olympics and gave my tape to some kids at Interscope. Interscope gave the tape to Jimmy Iovine. Jimmy Iovine liked it and he gave it to Dre. He played it for Dre. And Dre liked it and Dre was looking for me, you know, and found me like three days later. Well, the combination's working. I mean, you're, you're also kind of bringing Dre back in a way, to a certain extent. I mean, he's no, always no been. Doubt. I mean, he's always been there. He's always been doing this thing. But realistically, I mean, it's, I mean, his last, last album really wasn't, you know, that great. But here, like, I mean, everyone's feeling the, the actual production here. Dre, Dre was, Dre was off track for a minute. You yeah. know, Dre had a couple of bad years, but you know, Dre is Dre. Dre is, Dre is like a cat. Dre is always gonna land on his feet. He's always gonna land on his feet. So, you know, <clears throat> I feel like, I feel like me and Dre got a chemistry similar to to him and Snoop's chemistry you know not necessarily to compare myself to Snoop you know but there's a certain chemistry there and all Dre needed was that's hard to work with the right people that's you know hard. what I'm saying so Dre's back Dre's back in a big way do you, think, do you think the art of uh, I mean you talked about you know in terms of how you got your lyrical skills do you think the art of emceeing is kind of like is it dwindling in terms of like the way we're dealing with a lot of the, the commercial you know, end, end of things in terms of hip hop but That's crazy that he's saying that back then, bro. And you were fast forwarded 20 years, bro. <laughs> like, bro, I wish things could be the way it was back then, dog. Oh, if only you knew. <laughs> Cause, dog, hey, don't, don't none of the trash hip hop that y'all complaining about in 1999 compared to that Bullshit today. Actual true skills. I mean, is it, is it something that's coming back, or is it? I feel like it's coming back. Um, I don't feel. I don't feel it necessarily really left. Left. You know, you just gotta check for the for the right stuff. You know, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to bring I'm trying to bring MCing and 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 and, and skill and 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 storytelling to a next level though. I'm trying to bring a next level to the game. You know. Bro, and I bet, I bet when all the like the the rapper rappers and the hip hop heads heard him saying that back then, they're like, ah oh, man, yeah, wah wah wah, bro, you ain't about to bring shit back. <laughs> you ain't about to bring MCN and storytelling all that shit back, Slim Shady, <laughs> bro. I do my stuff. The new album has definitely sparked a lot of controversy. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the actual article uh, written by Timothy White, uh, right. which, you know, he, he mentioned a couple things in terms of, you know, the obviously the guilty conscience and the 97 Bonnie and Clyde thing. Um, but, but what do you answer that? I mean, when you're actually talking about, you know, this, like a 15 year old girl that, you know, like, you know, hit it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And Timothy, Timothy White gave me a free ad, and I want to <laughs> thank him for that. And I also like his bow tie. It's a nice bow tie he had. Um, if the song Guilty Conscience that he's talking about, first of all, he doesn't know hip hop, so he doesn't belong judging it. He doesn't even know about it, so he shouldn't speak on it. But the song Guilty Conscience, what it was trying to say, if, if, if he had half a brain in his head, was that these, it was, it was three instances of somebody about to do something bad, and this is what was going through their mind when they was about to do this. You know what I'm saying? There's the good half of you and there's the bad half of you. And 99% of the time, especially in America, the bad half always wins. And that's what I was trying to show. It's a concept song. It's a concept song. Well, the fact song. he has to sit there and break that shit down. <laughs> but, you know, motherfuckers wasn't prepared to hear what M had to say at all. You know what I mean? But bad half always wins. And that's what I was trying to show. It's a concept song. It's a concept song, but Timothy White didn't see the, the concept behind it and obviously got offended because he probably really thinks that way. You know what I'm saying? That's, <laughs> that's his guilty conscience. He really thinks that way and wants to claim all of this righteousness and whatever, 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 you know, but his guilty conscience is making him take it seriously. I think it hit a soft spot for Timothy mm. White. 
you know. So Timothy's not here to speak for himself, but <laughs> um, but in terms of like where, where you're coming from with with lyrically, I mean, you know, you, you talk about Slim Shady as being that you know that side of you that you know when you really you know got to that point where you're just totally pissed and you're totally totally mad. I mean, how judging from the record and some of your lyrics, I mean, like how pissed off is Eminem? I mean, like is this just like a real good ability for you just to kind of vent in terms of what's on your mind at this particular point in time that your next track is on a different vibe? I've always said that my music, to me, for me, my music is like therapy for me. You know what I'm saying? It's a way for me to get stuff off my chest. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't, I haven't always been, I haven't always been pissed off. I haven't always been mad, you know. Um, it just came to a, I feel like right now, it's just came to a boiling point for me. You know what I mean? I've been through so much stuff in my life that, you know, I kind of reached a point where I was just fed up, you know, and just got tired of it. And it shows on the record, you know. All right, but the, but the masses kind of have to deal with what's going on in your mind, you know what I mean? And for some people to interpret that, it's, it can He's be a good interviewer. hard for some kids who don't necessarily understand what, what, what you've been through, you know what I mean? I don't think nobody will ever understand what's completely on my mind. And I'm not asking people to, you know. I'm kind of, my album is kind of like inviting you into my world. If you want to come into it, you do. If you don't, you don't. And I feel like one of the reasons that it's selling so many records is probably because there's so many kids that can relate to what I've been through, you know. There's kids that can listen to the music and say, I've been there, you know. I've been through that. So I think they can relate to it, you know. It's a lot of, there's a lot of poor people in the world. It's a lot of lower class people that been through a lot of stuff, you know. Right. I guess another thing that a lot of people have been uh, talking about in terms of controversy surrounding Eminem is, is the album, what, album cover. Why don't you actually explain it for us? The album cover goes along with the with the Bonnie and Clyde, 97 Bonnie and Clyde theme. And that song is about <clears throat> me murdering my daughter's mother and putting them in the trunk. And at the time when I wrote that song, I really felt like I wanted to do that. Mm. And that's why, that's why, again, I say my music is therapy for me. It's a way to get stuff off my chest. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of fathers that go through a lot of stuff with their baby's mothers, and they want to do that stuff, but they just don't say it. That's you a fact. You talk about it so, so much at ease. I want the that's time. That's a fact, bro. That is a fact, dog. <laughs> I ain't even, like, as obvious as that is, bro. As obvious as that is, it's like... A, and I'm sure both ways too, baby mamas and baby fathers. I'm talking about baby father, baby mamas right now, bruh. And I've witnessed it myself. I'm sure, a lot of y'all have, bruh. Men getting pissed, angry, frustrated to the point where they just want their baby mama to disappear. <laughs> All right, and y'all fill in the blanks. And M just gave his representation of that shit on the motherfucking song. People so fucking uptight that they weren't willing to goddamn digest that message all em was talking about is shit that men think about all the time who are in similar situations like that bro coming up with thousands of ways to to get rid of the body <laughs> i just wanted to murder my baby's mother i really did i mean honestly can you can you say you've never felt like killing somebody if you if you never been so mad at somebody has anybody ever put you through something through so much crap that you actually felt like killing him? I could probably say yes, but I don't necessarily know what that put it on the record. Well, I just, I was <laughs> expressing did. my Fuck views. It. Whatever's on my mind, I'm going to say it. If I'm thinking it, I'm going to say it. Hard. I'm that type of person. I've always been that type of person. Hard. You know, so if, I, if, I'm, if I'm evil enough to think it, or I'm demented enough to think it, or I'm smart enough to think it, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. You know, whatever it is, whatever it is, I'm going to say it. Now, the hip-hop community is definitely feeling what's going on with you, I mean, because you're actually going to be, uh, you're collaborating with a few people, it uh, looks like, in the future, so why don't you just kind of break down what's happening there? Um, <clears throat> I did some stuff with uh, The Mad Rapper, I did some stuff with uh, Missy Elliott, I did some stuff with uh, Jazzy Jeff, um, who else, who else? You know, Dre's, Dre's Chronic 2000, the Chronic 2Gs, that's coming out, I'm on that. I had a lot to do with that project, that whole thing, you know, just in the studio with Trey. Yeah, yeah, he wrote a lot. I mean, obvious question, and you probably asked this before, being a white rapper, you know what I mean? It's like, is it just come down to, we don't necessarily care what color person is, it just comes down to the credibility of the art form. I think it does, I think it does. 
there's still a lot of hard-headed people out in the world that just, it doesn't matter what you bring to the table, they still won't like you. But I feel like, I feel like overall, hip-hop is like any, any sport. You know what I'm saying? It's like basketball or football. If you can throw a football, it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter if you can if you can slam dunk a basketball. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't matter. It's it's all about the individual person. You know, and being that <clears throat> if there's not that many good white rappers, I don't have anything to do with that. You know what I'm saying? All I can do is speak for myself. You know, this is so the- crazy hearing it, bro. Like- it's, it, it never gets old to me. Like his story is so crazy, bro. Like the same shit people criticize Eminem for now by being for being so successful because he's white. Is the same reason why they discredited him initially. They wouldn't want it. They didn't want to take him serious initially, right? He had to struggle to get in. You hear him talking about this shit right now, bro. Just because I'm white don't mean anything. I can rap, right? He had shit to prove. Nobody wanted. Him. Nobody was fucking with him. But now since he got over that hump and was eaten because of his talent. You know what I mean? And you know what I'm saying? Him being white had a lot to do with it too, but his, he needed the talent to get there, right? But but the whole narrative flipped. All right, we, we, we wasn't fucking with you before because you're white. Well, all right, well, we're discrediting you now because you're white. <laughs> it's like, catch 22, damn. Them if you do, them if you don't, dog. This is me, and this is all. All I can do is bring me, you know? So I think it I think it really depends on the individual, you know? Every case is, every case is separate. Every case is different. Dope interview. Dope interview. Dope interview, bro. That was hard, bro. Appreciate y'all putting me on, man. Hope y'all enjoyed that shit. Send me some more. Love y'all.